Website builder and content management systems are the two most popular ways to create a website. CMS was basically the only way to create a website back in the day, but website builders are booming in popularity. So, which one should you use for a simple yet professional looking website? To answer that today, I'll compare Hostinger versus WordPress. Hostinger had a massive growth in popularity and functionality over the last couple of years, becoming one of the most popular website building providers. In fact, Hostinger is now recommended by WordPress itself. So WordPress is kind of promoting its competition. Maybe not the most outstanding move, but hey, at least they're giving credit where it's due. That said, despite the growing popularity of website builders in general, the web is still mostly ruled by WordPress. So if you think of some cool looking website you know, chances are it's built with WordPress. All right, but what are the main differences between the two? Hostinger is an online platform for building websites. It offers hosting services, sells domain names, and aims to simplify the web creating process. Now WordPress is a content management system, or CMS, as you might have seen or heard somewhere. But on its own, it's a free tool. You need to obtain hosting separately, purchase a domain name, and set up emails. WordPress focuses on providing complete freedom and control over every detail. Well, there's a big but. Level of freedom can lead to indecisiveness and confusion, particularly for those new to website building. So the main difference here is that Website Builder allows me to quickly design small projects and requires basically no knowledge. Meanwhile, WordPress gives me full control over what I want my website to do and how to do it. But it requires either previous knowledge or willingness to learn. Let's use an analogy here. Hosting your Website Builder is like an already pre-made Lego set where you can pick what you want. While WordPress is more like a box of Lego pieces where you have that full control to build what you like. All right, let's see how to build the website with each of them. The first thing you encounter is a selection of templates. A good variety of designs can significantly reduce your workload, as a visually appealing theme might only need content adjustments. Both Hostinger and WordPress offer extensive design options. Hostinger has over 100 template selections, while WordPress has an enormous selection with over 12,000 free themes and even more premium designs. Since anyone can create a WordPress theme, there are numerous third-party marketplaces and developers offering custom templates. Sounds like WordPress is just better here, right? Well, not exactly. WordPress can be more demanding. While you can use popular themes that are frequently updated, I've encountered instances where the theme my site relied on was abandoned, requiring a complete website overhaul. Without a stringent approval process for themes, many can cause issues with specific plugins or even the overall website structure. I'm not here to discourage you. WordPress has more positives than negatives, but Hostinger addresses these problems effectively. Its templates are created by the platform itself and are regularly updated, ensuring compatibility with all tools. But the main advantage of Hostinger when talking about templates is AI. What I grew to love over this year is Hostinger Website Builder's AI. Let me explain. When it first started out, the created designs were, well, not so great. But with updates, it changed my opinion. Hostinger's AI website builder can create templates based on your prompt. You just type a few sentences on what kind of website you want, and in a few moments, you get the results. While it might not always be perfect, the AI is rapidly improving. Currently, Hostinger can craft designs and populate them with photos and text tailored to your niche. Check out this AI created template. It's nearly ready for publishing, complete with relevant images and text. That's really the fastest way to start building a website. Some minor edits and it's ready to go. If you want to try hosting our AI capabilities yourself, why not use a discount I've got for you? There's a link in the description. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code that's on the screen. Now let's take a look at other reasons why Hostinger is more beginner friendly. For that, we'll compare Hostinger versus WordPress editors. Starting with the Hostinger review as it's a really modern website builder. It incorporates a lot of AI technology and designs, offering full drag and drop controls for easy customization. You just find what you need and drag it in. Yeah, simple as that. Hostinger enables you to manipulate individual elements and entire sections on your website. The selection of elements is somewhat limited, so it would be nice to see more variety in the future. That said, it's enough for smaller web projects to look visually appealing and modern. Now, WordPress offers multiple design approaches, each with its own complexity. 
The traditional method involves selecting a theme, accessing customization options, and potentially adding CSS for further adjustments. Nowadays, many themes also include separate plugins that offer extensive customization options, although these features can sometimes be restricted behind premium subscriptions. There's also a possibility of using WordPress website builders like Elementor and Seedprod. That way you can design your site with full drag and drop controls. It won't be as easy as using Hostinger's website builder, but it's gonna be much easier than using the traditional WordPress method, which I wouldn't recommend to beginners. All right, next let's compare WordPress versus Hostinger for e-commerce or business websites. To be honest, Hostinger feels a bit limited here. It allows you to sell up to 500 products or variations regardless of your plan. The problem is that this limit cannot currently be expanded. Since the Hostinger Builder is still in its early stages, I have high hopes that this will change sometime soon. Besides that, there are no marketing options, and there aren't any more advanced tools in how the store works and looks. For more intricate business tasks, you may need to rely on third-party providers. On the flip side, with WordPress, the options here are virtually unlimited, as it has thousands of plugins available in its ecosystem. With new plugins added daily, WordPress offers any feature you might desire for your business website. However, as it's often the case with WordPress, the responsibility of security largely falls on you. Some plugins may become outdated, pose security risk, or conflict with others despite WordPress's security measures. With e-commerce and different regulations around the globe, setting up an online business could become very difficult and confusing. Oh, and as for why Hostinger is recommended by WordPress creators, well, it solves at least some of these issues by allowing you to easily deactivate problematic plugins and gain insights into issues to better understand what went wrong. A similar situation exists with search engine optimization and analytics. Hostinger only offers basic SEO tools and doesn't provide clear explanations of what each feature does, which can be confusing for users. Meanwhile, WordPress again relies on plugins. This presents a mixed bag situation. On one hand, I appreciate that there are no unnecessary tools to slow down your site. On the other hand, finding a good plugin for your specific needs can be time consuming. Occasionally, I end up using an outdated and slow tool, where a managed and regularly updated alternative from the provider would be more effective. Looking at analytics, Hostinger includes its own tool, which, although limited, provides essential information such as the number of orders received, customer locations, and site visit durations. This simplifies tracking key metrics without the need to set up external tools. Since for WordPress users, getting plugins is nearly required, I can recommend some options. For SEO, get Yoast. Now for analytics, I suggest getting SiteKit, since it's free and shows all data directly from Google. It's simple, yet a very useful tool. With it, you can check things how users find and use your website. Lastly, for marketing, Optin Monster is your best bet for getting a stable plugin. Keep in mind that there are compatibility issues with some plugins, like Caching plugin conflicts seem to be logical, right? But sometimes a plugin that optimizes images can go haywire because of a text editing plugin. So, Hostinger, it's a lightweight website builder, while WordPress is an extensive builder with more possibilities. But which loads faster? Well, it depends. With WordPress, it's mostly up to you as there are many ways to optimize content and speed. With Hostinger, you're locked in with the performance it offers. WordPress can be customized to an extreme degree, meaning you're responsible for your site's speed. This can be a positive if you enjoy tweaking technical details, but a drawback if you prefer to focus on the content of your website. It's practically impossible to test WordPress's performance on its own because it requires hosting. But how fast should a website load? Well, Google currently recommends a loading time of 2.5 seconds. Performance isn't only about user experience anymore. How quickly your site loads also affects your Google search rankings and overall SEO. Therefore, to achieve online success, speed is crucial. While I couldn't create an identical website, I aimed to make something comparable in size. Then I used Google PageSpeed Insights to assess whether it met the recommended performance standards. The website built with Hostinger showed great results. In contrast, the WordPress site hosted on Hostinger loaded in approximately 1.1 seconds. All right, but to be fair, comparing Hostinger versus Hostinger WordPress is kind of weird. So let's see how WordPress performs when hosted on a different provider's servers. 
One of WordPress's top recommendations is Bluehost, so let's go with that. The results were a bit slower, loading in 2.3 seconds. Visually, I couldn't notice any difference. It looked like everything loaded in an instant on all three websites. Now, SEO and Google search rankings are still a thing, but considering all of the websites managed to load in less than the recommended 2.5 seconds, it shouldn't be a problem. I haven't touched on pricing and plans yet in this website builders versus WordPress comparison. By now, you probably know which tool you wanna to use, but the pricing can be a little bit confusing. So what will be more affordable? Hosting or website builder or WordPress? Technically, WordPress itself doesn't cost anything. It's free to use. While there are premium templates and plugins available for purchase, the core platform is entirely free. So if you have your own server, you can just host your website on it. But you're probably here not for building servers, but a website instead. With that in mind, I'll compare hosting or pricing with Bluehost, as it's the hosting WordPress recommends. Sure, I could compare hosting or WordPress versus hosting or pricing, but that wouldn't make it very interesting. Price-wise, Hostinger and Bluehost start with comparable deals. In fact, Bluehost costs slightly less, but with comparing the resources offered, Hostinger takes the lead with 100 gigabytes of storage space and the capability to host up to 100 websites. This is a comprehensive plan, especially suitable for hosting blogs and portfolios. On the other hand, Bluehost limits you to one website and 10 gigabytes of storage space, which might be sufficient depending on your needs. Both providers offer additional features, such as a free domain name, free SSL certificate, unlimited bandwidth, and professional email accounts. Overall, when comparing pricing, I have to side with Hostinger, as it brings more value. It's a cheap website builder with higher site limits, meaning I can create more test sites or random projects without spending extra. Now, having domain privacy means I won't get spam emails and will have better privacy. While having content delivery networks means I don't need to think about performance in other locations. CDN takes care of that for me. By the way, if you want more hosting or website builder comparisons, we've got plenty on our channel, so don't forget to subscribe. All right, to sum things up, what's the best website builder for you? Hostinger or WordPress? If I want to get a professional website quickly with the least amount of effort, I would choose hosting or website builder. Now, if you're willing to spend some time and learn how the web works, how the sites are built, and how everything interacts, give WordPress a try. The end result might feel more satisfying too. And if it gets too overwhelming, you can always just switch to hosting or and build your site in a couple of hours. That's all in this WordPress versus hosting or comparison. Thanks for watching to the end and see you guys soon.